and, and uh, it's about managing contacts and managing different users within our Civi CRM session, so maybe it's more appropriate later as a question. Uh, why don't you ask the question now and I'll figure out where the best place to work it sure. in. Sure. So my hope is that uh, myself, my colleagues at administrative level will, would, of course, we we'd all have access and have a, a login. And then I want some folks to be able to work in this environment and other folks only to be able to enter in their interaction with this contact. I'm assuming that, okay. that you can set um, uh, uh, um, user, manager, contributor, viewer type of for every um, login. Uh, broadly speaking, yes. And uh, when we get to permissions, uh, we'll, okay. we'll cover that in, in greater detail. Thank you. Um, no problem. Uh, so, uh, the, so, so we also have a number of other tabs. And the, the first tab I want to look at here is the Activities tab. Um, the Activities tab is going to show you a history of every interaction that you've had with this person or that they've had with you. So you can see in this case that this person, uh, you know, signed up for several memberships. Uh, they clicked on the tell a friend on the membership, et cetera. Um, I could also say that, for instance, I want to have a meeting with this person, or I had a meeting, let's say. I'm going to say new activity, and I'm going to select meeting. And I'm going to say that this meeting was with um, Melinda, who I'm editing, but it was also with, say, Joseph here. Uh, and maybe I could even create a new, I, I, I might even have a, a new person who's not in the database so I can create on the fly here. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but then uh, I, can, I can record that this was a meeting about uh, some very important topic. We had a very productive meeting. And I'm going to say that that happened maybe last Thursday, 2.15 p.m., and that it was completed. Uh, I can attach files to this to this activity. I can schedule a follow-up from this activity. For now, I'm just going to save this because I just want to show you that um, now now that I've added an activity to this person, I can click on. Oops, sorry. Um, once I click on activities, you can see that I now have a, a new record for this person, and I can build a continuous log. Uh, I can also, for instance, create. Um, I can, I can send an email or uh, if I say that I want to print a PDF letter, uh, I can actually print the PDF letter from here and uh, I'm going to pick a template. And I can actually send, I can actually have this letter be generated. Um, this PDF, I'm not going to be able to download and print it so I can send it to the person. And so in this case, actually adding the activity of make a PDF letter actually adds the letter to, actually lets you create the letter and stores the content of the letter uh, on this person's contact record. Um, the great thing about this is that now later I can do searches, and when we get into searches I'll demonstrate this, but I can say show me anybody who I've had a meeting with in the last six months, or show me um, somebody who has been to one of our volunteer orientations but has yet to actually have a volunteer activity recorded. Uh, and to be clear, all these activities that you're seeing here can all be customized. Pretty much any drop-down that you see in Civi CRM, uh, you can add and remove the items to it to, you know, to, to meet the needs of, of your organization. Uh, and the ability, the ability to actually search based on people's activity history uh, means that you can do some, some very powerful things. Um, I'm going to stop again for questions. Does anybody have any questions on what I've just covered? Cool. I'm going to um, go on. I'm going to cover a little bit more about what you see on a single activity record. Um, and then that's going to be sort of the first half. And then the second half, I'm going to show you what you can do to interact with folks um, on a, on a broader basis, for instance, uh, creating donation pages, membership signups, etc. So, um, but feel, feel free to ask questions ahead of time if you know that something makes you think of something, and I'll work it in at the appropriate point. John? Um, yes. It's Brenda. 
Uh, you just I said that. Hi. You just mentioned that you could uh, see who participated in activities. I missed how you how you did that. How do you see who participated in a particular activity? Did I misunderstand? That's an excellent question, and I'm going to get to that when we cover searches. Thanks. No problem. Um, I'm going to go very quickly through some of the other tabs here. Uh, there's a contributions tab here, although Melinda here has not made any contributions. Uh, I'll, I'll pull up a record with contributions later since donor management is a big part of uh, what folks use CityCRM for. Uh, you can record a contribution that you get from somebody. Uh, either if you, know, if you get a check, for instance, you can simply press record contribution and log that you, you know, maybe you received $50 from this person. Let's say that this was a, uh, a donation and it was $50 and it came from uh, last Thursday's meeting. Uh, I can assign it to campaigns. For instance, if you um, sort your, uh, your donations by appeal, you can use this to um, generate statistics comparing one appeal to another or just pulling up the results of one appeal. Uh, you can soft credit, which I won't get into here. Uh, and let's just say that uh, this was a check that I received today. Um, and I, um, I'm just going to save here. Uh, you can see that there's actually custom, there's custom fields that are specific to this organization that are specific to a donation, but I'm not going to fill those out for now. Um, and I'm not going to get into these other features in detail. Uh, I'll tell you what they are. Honor reinformation uh, is if, some, if, if the donation is in honor or in memory of somebody. And the premiums are if you have the sort of uh, PBS approach of, you know, if you donate $75, you get a free tote bag sort of situation. Uh, you can configure that in City CRM as well. Uh, and you can see now that I've created a donation for this person. They have this donation log, $50. It's also added an activity for them that, um, that, that they made a contribution. So you can see it here as well. Uh, and of course, um, if I'm set up to take credit card contributions, I can actually take a credit card contribution here right now, and if I put in their billing information into the appropriate place here with their credit card number, it will actually charge their credit card on, directly through the system uh, and then log the contribution in the system directly. Uh, folks who maybe are using systems where your donations come into something else like Network for Good or PayPal, uh, you're familiar with the situation where you have to then um, download the information from PayPal and then either retype it or import it into a system uh, to track the donations along with everything else. Uh, one of the great things about City CRM is that if somebody makes an online donation, uh, you get the money recorded in your bank account immediately, but you also get them added to your database immediately. Or if they're already in your database, they get the contribution added to their account immediately so that you can run reports day by day during your big campaigns so you can see the, you can see the, uh, the donations and report on them immediately. Uh, are, there any, are there any questions about anything that I've just discussed? Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, you can also uh, track people's uh, history of attending events. You can also track their membership uh, history if you are an organization that has uh, a, you know, memberships, you know, say people pay a membership due for $50 a year or $100 a year. Uh, I'm going to get into those in a little bit more detail later. Uh, the last thing I want to get into right now is the relationships, groups, and tags. Uh, the relationships let you um, define the, uh, the ways that this person is connected to other people in your organization. So you can see here that Melinda is the parent of two other people in your database, the spouse of somebody else, and is also the head of household of a household record. Uh, I'm going to get into household and organization records in a little bit. Um, what's great about this is that when you, when you create relationships, you can say, oh, this person is, say, uh, you know, the partner of somebody else or is a board member of this other organization. 
and it knows very well that um, you can't be the board member of another individual, and you can't be the spouse of another organization. So if I do a search for, um, if I want to create a board member relationship, it's only going to pull up uh, organizations. I'm going to add a relationship here that she is the board member of uh, this, what is it, Eastmont Computing Center until the end of this month. I'm going to go ahead and save that relationship. Oh, I, uh, apparently there's more than one. Oh, sorry, let me, uh, there's, there's, there's two Eastmont Computing Centers in here which is why it is asking me which one I want to be a board member of. And you can see now that I've added a new relationship. Some relationships you may not have start and end dates on. The ones that you do have end dates on will actually become expired on their own uh, late, later on. Uh, and likewise, you can always disable a relationship at any time, which doesn't delete it. You can delete a relationship. But what's nice about disabling a relationship is that now I know that this person is formerly the spouse of somebody else, uh, so that later maybe I want to search on people who are former spouses. Uh, what's also good about relationships is that you can tie them to memberships. If, for instance, you have a family membership and somebody signs up for a family membership, you can automatically have the benefits of membership be extended to uh, all the members of the family. Uh, I see I have one question from Jerome on the Q&A. Uh, can members sign in and make contributions on their own without having to require the treasurer to make the entry? Absolutely, and we're going to cover that in a little bit. Uh, and then the other question is recording contributions. Does the organization have to have their own bank merchant account rather than PayPal? Uh, no, it's an either or, and it's actually you can use both. You can use PayPal or you can use uh, a, a merchant account if, for instance, uh, your merchant uh, provider supports uh, Authorize.net, which is a very common pay, payment gateway. Uh, Civi CRM actually supports a, a, a wide variety of payment processors as well. So if you have a Stripe account or a Payflow account, uh, or, for, um, or for those of you who are overseas, I'm mostly mentioning American payment processors uh, because those are the ones I'm familiar with, but uh, th there's support for a lot of uh, local payment processors as well, especially for folks in the Australia, New Zealand region, for folks in India. Um, I know that there's a lot of local payment processors there, and those, uh, those are, uh, many of them are supported, although not every single one. Uh, moving on, um, I'm going to talk about groups and tags, and then I'll take a couple more questions. Groups are a way that you can categorize your, your folks. Uh, so you can see that in this database we've got um, a number of, of groups. We've got maybe about 10 here. Uh, so this person is a member of the newsletter subscribers group, and maybe they're part of the active gardeners group as well. Let me add them to the active gardeners. And now when, I see, now when I come to this person's record, uh, we have that they're a member of both groups. What's great about groups is that you can then say, you, you can use the groups as a way to slice and dice your folks so that you can do uh, more exact segmentation. You can say, show me a list of contributions, but only from my active gardeners. Or, or send an email, but only to my active NY constituents. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a good way to be able to segment your data so that you can see um, various reporting uh, based on, on one group versus another group. Uh, now you can add somebody to a group manually like you just saw, but there's another way to do, do groups which is to do a search and say anybody who meets this criteria, let's say I want to send something to everybody who lives in New York City. Uh, I, can, I can grab uh, anybody who's whose city is New York and say I can search for them and then I can add them to a group, but I can also set up what's called a smart group where anybody who then later moves to New York City or gets added to the database in, in New York City will automatically be added to the group. And likewise, if I have somebody in this group who then later moves to another place and they are no longer a resident of New York City, they'll automatically be removed from that group. So you don't have to keep updating it manually if 
you can set search criteria to, to, to determine that. I'm going to get into that in a few minutes when we get into searches. Tags are another way that we can uh, segment folks. Um, the question of when to use groups and when to use tags is beyond the scope of this. Uh, I like to say that I like to use tags for things that are a little bit more ad hoc, and I like to use groups for things that are a little bit more permanent, but that's, that's really a judgment call on your case. Um, I'm not going to get into most of these other tabs here. I will get into events and mailings and memberships uh, in the second half. Uh, the others I'm not going to get into except to say that you can add an, an unlimited number of notes to people. The change log will show you um, when people were, when, when a record was changed, who changed it, and what the change was. So you can see here that I added Melinda Adams to the Active Gardeners group and it says when I did that and who did it. So later if you need to audit, oh, why did somebody's phone number get deleted, you can actually go into the change log, see who changed or deleted a phone number, and you can actually see what the old phone number was. I'm going to stop right there. Does anybody have questions on the relationship, group, tags, notes, or change log? I, I, this is Drew. I have a question. Um, we one of, one of the groups that we just set up was, um, of, of course, we're a membership organization, and we're, we're the West Virginia Nonprofit Association. So nonprofits join us. Uh, we set up their memberships, and employees are um, granted a membership if their um, if, if their employer is basically one of our members. Um, we also needed a way to filter on on CEOs or directors of those organizations for, for mailing specific to that population. Um, does it make sense to create two relationships for a CEO, one for their CEO relationship and one for the fact that they're an employee of an organization? That's how I would do it. There's a couple of ways, there's a couple of ways to approach that, but I, that is how I would do it, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to get into searching next. Uh, actually, sorry, we won't get into searching next. I want to show uh, contribution pages and event pages first. But when we get to searches, I'm going to show you a, a very cool feature that I think will be relevant to you uh, where you can uh, find contacts who are related, where, where you're searching for the criteria of one contact and then getting all of the relationships for that contact. And the example that I've seen this used for is uh, uh, I implemented Civi CRM for an organization that's a public interest law organization. And they have a lot of law firms they work with that do pro bono work for them. Um, and they wanted to hit up the partners of the organization in a special appeal for, for donations. So they were able to actually set it up such that they can have a group uh, of all the people who have, all the, all the law firms who have done pro bono work but then they can do a search and not get back a list of those firms, but a list of the partners in, that, in those firms. And that's a good way to make smart groups to, for your situation, Drew, uh, to, to meet your needs. I want to move on to um, creating contribution and event pages, uh, especially because we've gotten a question from, uh, from Jerome about taking, taking online donations. So um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to pull up the Manage Contribution pages. And you can see that we actually have uh, four membership, four, four contribution pages for this organization. And I'm going to pull up the, the live page. Now, one, one thing that's a little bit unfortunate about this is that this is, I installed this and I did not take any time to theme this site so that it looks like uh, a real a real site. This is basically an out of the box with absolutely no branding, etc. It you know it just says Palante Tech City CRM demo site at the top. I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to show you a couple of, uh, um, of of donation sites that I've built after I've gone through this, so you can get a sense of what it could really look like. In this case, um, you can have this page here. Somebody can pull it up and they can say, I want to give this contribution amount. They can select from here. They can give an other amount and type it in. Uh, and they can, uh, in this case, we've got a premium, premium of a coffee mug, although I believe that they have to select the $50 level, right? It's only, oh, maybe it's available at lower levels. 
it's, a, it's available at $5 and up. They can select a coffee mug. Uh, and then they put in their credit card information, and it collects the information um, directly into the database. You saw me enter a, a contribution from Melinda earlier. This is very similar. This will collect the information. It will bill their credit card immediately, and their record will automatically be created in the database. Or if they're already in the database, it will add the contribution to their record. Um, and you saw that you can have multiple donation pages going on at once, so that maybe different uh, parts of your organization have different uh, donation pages going on at once. Uh, for instance, an organization I just built a city CRM site for a city CRM database for uh, has their main donation page, which happens all the time. But right now they're going through a capital funds appeal, and they're running a separate donation page for that, which has its own text, its own graphics, and and the funds are automatically allocated uh, into the uh, into the capital appeal fund or the capital fund. So that uh, by, by virtue of which page they've donated on, they can decide where the funds go. Now this is a very plain page, which I don't really like very much. So I'm actually going to pull up a couple of other pages that uh, we've, we've done that are, uh, that, are, that are a lot nicer looking. I'm going to pull up maybe two or three here so you can see what they look like out in the, out in the real world. Pull up this page, and let me pull up um, the most recent one I've done. So let's uh, let's click on their donate page. Sorry, my internet seems to be a little bit slow today. Some of these are coming up very slowly. Uh, let me let me click on their donate page. This one seems so here is an example of a page that this is a city CRM donation page. See that it's of your website, uh, which is really great if you're used to say PayPal, where you click on the PayPal link and what you get is a uh, a page that looks like every other PayPal page. Or maybe you can put your logo on it, but it doesn't take the look and feel of your site. It doesn't take the the navigation for your site or anything else that you might want other people to see while they're on it. You can also do this all through your site so that way um, it, 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 it makes for uh, a one branding experience where they don't end up on a different website with a different look and feel and then end up back at your website. That, uh, this organization uh, chose to have, um, you can actually select the amount like this with these little boxes, which is a much prettier approach. Uh, you can also say that uh, you want to make a recurring donation where now they're giving $25 every month, and City CRM will just automatically receive the $25 donations every month. Uh, note that your payment processor has to support this. All the major processors do, PayPal, Authorize.net, et cetera, although generally speaking, they'll charge you an additional fee for this feature. It's usually another $10 a month. Uh, you can also say that you want this to be an honor or in memory of somebody. You collect their credit card information. Uh, in the case of some of these other organizations, um, there are also information about the people. Uh, this one is collecting very basic information. It's not very exciting. Uh, and likewise, legal momentum. The CPEN folks, I believe, actually do collect more information. They collect information about what you're interested in, for instance. So that way, later, you can go back and you can do searches for who contributed and said, I was interested in this issue versus this issue, so that you can send them specific appeals for, for their particular issue. And hopefully, that translates into uh, greater donations. Oh, and of course, um, CPEN lets you click this Join the Network box which uh, subscribes you to a specific, um, a specific newsletter of theirs. And likewise they're, likewise, they're collecting information about your organization. They're collecting your Twitter handle, et cetera. So um, Jerome asks, if a contributor gives a credit card or PayPal number for payment, is that information stored or deleted? I don't want to store financial information. Uh, the, the answer to that is that you actually can't store that information. Um, I suppose if you wanted to customize your database, 
you could maybe hack it to do so. But for, um, for PCI regulation purposes, and there's probably uh, equivalents in uh, other countries, but in the United States, if you are storing credit card information, it actually subjects you to a much higher level of uh, scrutiny. You have to get annual audits. You have to fill in these questionnaires once a quarter. Uh, it's a big mess. And so the vast majority of payment processors won't let you store, store credit card information in the database. And by default, uh, CiviCRM will not store that credit card information. Do folks have other questions about the contribution pages that we, con contribution pages in general? John, it's Brenda, and forgive me if this is a pretty basic question, but are you saying that we can have this page sitting on our website? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Can have this page no what? And we, what the, was page, that the page sits on your website. Okay. And what's great about that is that when you create a new page for a new appeal, it will replicate the look and feel of your website immediately. Um, I'm not going to go too far into the settings that you can set here. Um, I'm going to, I'm, but I'm going to browse through them very quickly. Um, you can set the text on the page. You can add images. Um, if, if this is supposed to be earmarked for a specific campaign, you can add that. Um, you can set up the amounts that people are signing up for. In this case, we're doing some very simple uh, approaches where you're just picking one number plus perhaps another amount. But you can actually see that, for instance, uh, they can get very complicated if you want. I'm going to show you another page on the National Lawyers Guild page where here they can actually not only pick their, the, the amount that they want to give for their, their membership dues, but they can, for instance, sign up for these other committees, some of which are free, some of which cost a, an additional fee. Um, and this will actually automatically join in to these committees for, for a, a term of one year. They can make these other donations that can be earmarked to specific other funds. And they're doing this all on one page. But then on the back end, you'll actually see this recorded as a number of different line items so that you can know how much money got donated to each fund. I'm going to go back to the, the back end. Um, you can also say, uh, you can also, as we just saw, you can allow people to sign up for memberships through these donation, or I should call them contribution pages, because it's not always a donation. It could be a membership uh, join or renewal fee. Uh, and you can say which, which memberships, if you have multiple membership types you want people to be able to sign up for through here. Uh, they, can, they can sign up for memberships that are automatically renewing. Uh, you can customize the receipt. Oh, it's complaining because I made a change. I don't have to save that though. You can set up little tell a friend. You can set up the premiums for the, for the coffee mug or the, or the tote bag. You can get a little widget which will give one of those thermometers showing how much people have given through this page. And then you can do with uh, personal campaign pages which allows uh, your supporters to actually create their own version of the page where they get to add their own little paragraph to say, this is important to me because of X. And they can send out that link to their friends. And so their friends will see a customized version of the page for them. And if somebody gives through, through that person's personal page, you can actually track how much was raised through each personal page separately. Do people have any questions about contribution now? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I'm going to take that as a no, and I'm going to move on. Um, I'm, I'm not really going to go I'm into sorry, event there was pages. A lot of right? I'm sorry, John. There was a lot of disruption on the line. I didn't hear the question. Oh, I was, I was just asking if there were any questions about contributions. No, thank you. OK. Um, I'm not going to go into the events much on screen, because um, creating new events is very similar to how you create contribution pages. You can say, I have a new event. You fill in a form about the event. You can, if you have the same sorts of events all the time, then you can do a pre-filled template. Uh, you can say different things about the event. And, people, and, and once you've filled out this form, um, you then have a new event which people can register for online. 
And when they register for it online, it adds that they are registered for the event in the system. Uh, you can take payments in the system. And you can do reports on who's registered, or later you can mark who attended and who didn't show up. And then you can, for instance, send different emails to them based on that. Uh, Civi CRM also has what's called scheduled reminders where you can set it up such that um, somebody who attends an event can automatically get, or somebody who signs up for an event can get a notice 30 days ahead, 7 days ahead, maybe 3 days after, um, sending them specific emails saying, you know, please don't forget to come, or thank you for attending. Or you can send different messages for the people who, sh who showed up versus didn't show it, versus the folks who didn't show up. Um, and when you create the page, it takes on the look and feel of your website, uh, very similarly to if you um, created a new, uh, new event page, uh, new uh, donation page. So I'm, I'm going to pull this up. Again, it's not going to look very fancy here. In this case, there's this one event you can sign up. Uh, there's only one option for how much you pay. You take the credit card info, and now this person's registered for your event. Uh, and you can do reporting on that later. Uh, it also handles uh, early bird discounts. Uh, you can, you can um, install a, a plugin called Civi Discount, which lets you give out discount codes to folks or lets you give discounts based on, for instance, the fact that they might be a member. So if they're a member and they're logged in, they'll automatically get a, a discount. Uh, and you can and you can also set up wait lists and wait list management. So if, you're, if your event is full, people can still sign up, but they end up on a wait list and it tells them they're on a wait list. And as people cancel, people can automatically be moved off the wait list in, as, into the registered event status. Uh, are there any questions about events? Great. I'm going to go on to memberships then. Um, memberships uh, you can set up. Typically you want to set up a membership if your organization uh, has some form of membership dues that typically goes to some sort of membership that uh, has a limited time period, although not necessarily. So for instance, in this case, uh, this organization has three different kinds of memberships. I guess I have a test membership here. Um, they have a general membership which is a rolling membership, which means that it, it, it ends two years from the date it starts, as opposed to a fixed membership where maybe it ends on December 31st of, of the year you sign up in. Uh, they also have a student membership and a lifetime membership, uh, which are good for one year and, and, and a lifetime respectively. You can set minimum fees, although you can set up membership fees. So maybe you, you can ask people to give on a sliding scale for a general membership, $100, $200, $300. You can see that in the case of the general and the lifetime membership, uh, it actually extends to the household members as well. Uh, and in this case, only you can't sign up for a lifetime membership. Only an administrator on the back end can give you a lifetime membership. Uh, and then uh, I can edit these. I can also edit the membership status types. So for instance, you can say that somebody who uh, let their membership lapse is, is still a grace period member but is not a full member, but they're not completely expired. So maybe they get some of the permissions of the, uh, they get some of the permissions of the, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, sorry, let me start this over. Uh, sorry, somebody, somebody who has an expired membership, but maybe you've defined a grace period for them of one month, or let's, let's see, in this case, we actually don't have a grace period. We've decided to disable it on this, on this site. But I'm going to go ahead and enable the grace period again and say that the grace period is anywhere from the end date to one month after the end date. So that means that maybe if you give uh, special privileges to members, they're still eligible for all the privileges, even though they're expired, but you can still go in and you can search for everybody who has a GRACE membership uh, and, and separate them out from your folks who have current memberships. This is very powerful if you end up integrating Civi CRM with your website uh, because, for instance, uh, you might give uh, members only content to some of your members. Uh, 
So uh, I've got an organization, for instance, where when you sign up, you immediately get access to certain members-only content, uh, downloadable uh, curriculum, webinars, uh, recorded webinars, etc. cetera. Uh, and you can access that section for a year from the time you sign up. And if they renew, then it gets extended. But if they don't renew, you don't have to remove their access from the website. It automatically removes their access from the website automatically. Uh, Don, I see your question. Uh, I just want to ask if anybody has any questions about membership as I've discussed it right here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to assume not. So I'm going to answer Don's question. How does the person paying know that we will not be storing their credit card info? Uh, and that's a good question. Um, there's two different ways to do this. Um, well, there's, there's a couple of different ways to do it. One is you can actually, if you have a payment processor that allows you to redirect them off to another website, for instance PayPal, you can actually redirect them to standard, uh, to, to PayPal so that their information is being entered on the PayPal website rather than your website. Uh, this is a great way to assure them that you don't have their info, but I really don't like it because as I said, I'm a big fan of being able to keep them on your website, keep them within your branding, etc. Um, other than that, uh, there, is, um, there are some pay pro payment processors that um, will actually pop up a little miniature window that will pop up a little security link. Uh, other than that, uh, the, the way that you know that somebody isn't storing your payment info is that they uh, take their language from their payment processor. Uh, and typically your payment processor will have specific language that you can put on your donation page along with a link to their, you know, their guarantee about how it works. And so somebody can, I, I mean, can somebody lie? In theory, sure. Uh, but, but generally speaking, um, City CRM out of the box doesn't have the capacity to store credit card info. So somebody would really have to go out of their way to be doing that. Uh, and the degree to which you can assure your, your, your users that you're not doing that is partly based on the degree to which they trust you when you put uh, a little badge for your, from your payment processor saying this site does not collect payments themselves. Uh, so I've got a question from Jill. How can members change or update their contact information? Uh, there's, there's two ways you can do this. Um, if your website, uh, if, if you give people logins to your website uh, based on their contact info, it's very easy. You can, um, you can give somebody your, um, you can give them a contact, a, what's called a contact dashboard. Uh, let me see, I don't think I've got the contact dashboard set up on this demo site, but I, I can pull up a organization that does have a contact dashboard to demonstrate this. When you sign in, uh, let me just quickly sign into this. this uh, website here. This organization has it set up so that when you log into the website, you get the contact info that they want you to see about their organization. So you, you define which fields you want them to be able to change or edit. You can see that here it's got my first and last name, my law firm, my street address, my email, and then they want me to be able to change uh, which states I'm admitted, admitted to practice in because uh, that actually shows up in a, in, a, in a referral directory that is tied to my membership. One of the benefits of membership for this organization is that you're listed in a referral directory that members of the public can come to the website and say, I need, I need a, a, a lawyer specializing in this kind of practice, and I want to be able to view it by state. And then I can say, edit my contact info here. And you can see that they actually let you edit all of, all of these fields. You can say that somebody can view but not edit a field. But I can say, you know what, I'm now admitted to practice in Virginia as well. And I am with, you know, Goldberg and Goldberg Esquire. And I can now save this information. And now, next time I log in, this is, this is the page that I will save. Um, and that's, that's called a contact dashboard, and that's, 
you, 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 um, it takes about 10 minutes to set up. You have to pick the field you want to have available, and then you have to um, enable it so that people see it when they log in. Uh, the, um, the next question I have is from Drew Tanner. Can you recommend resources tutorials on integrating Civi member with WordPress users for the member only access you mentioned? Um, unfortunately, I can't. Um, Civi CRM integrates with a number of, uh, of content management systems, um, WordPress being one of them, a very popular one. It is probably the most popular content management system. Unfortunately, it is not the one that I am an expert on. Uh, and I don't want to give you um, information that uh, ends up being bad information. Uh, if you like, uh, you, I can, if you want to email me after this is over, I can actually refer you to the folks that I think of as my experts on Civi CRM with WordPress integration. And you can ask the question to them and they can hopefully help you out. And then the question from Jerome is, I'm sure there's a way, but does Civi CRM automatically notify a member that their, special mem uh, that their special access to a member only section is going to expire unless they renew? And the answer is yes. Uh, what you can do, this is actually the same as when I talked about the, um, the reminders for somebody setting up for an event. You can also set up um, reminders for uh, membership. You go to Administer Menu, Communication, Schedule Reminders. And I, you can actually see that we, I actually have one that I've set up here in the past that says that um, if you have a general or a student membership, not a lifetime membership, those don't expire, um, but that 30 days before the end of the membership, the membership end date, you are going to send them a specific email that says, in this case, dear, and then it inserts their first name. Your membership expires in 30 days. Anything else you want to add, thanks, in this case, Andrea. Uh, and, and this email will go out to people 30 days before the renewal, uh, before, before it's scheduled to renew. You can also say to also send it out every 10 days thereafter. Um, and you can also set up additional uh, reminders on whatever schedule you like just by creating um, an additional scheduled reminder here. Does that answer your question, Jerome? Um, I'm actually going to move on because I know, you know folks are expected to be done in a few minutes. I'm just going to cover a couple of things very quickly here. Uh, one is you can search um, in a number of different ways. You can search and say, show me anybody in one of my groups or that has a certain tag. Um, but more often you want to do a much more complicated search. Show me any of my, um, let's say show me any, anybody who's a newsletter subscriber that's made a donation this year. So you can see that up here, I'm selecting from the basic criteria, I want to limit this search to newsletter subscribers. And then I'm coming down to contributions, and I'm going to say anybody who has made a donation this year, although I could also select my own date range. So let's actually do like a three-year period. Let's, uh, let's say from April 1st, 2011, and I won't put in an end date, so it'll just pick anybody from April 1st, 2011, to present who has made a donation who is also a newsletter subscriber. And I'm going to do this search. And you can see that I've come up with six people. Unsurprisingly, we came up with Melinda because Melinda, we saw earlier, was in the newsletter subscriber group. And she made a donation in the last three years. Like I said, I can also make this a, a, a smart group. Now. So now, actually, let me, let me stop. I can take an action on all these people. I can add them to a new group. I can, I can export them. I can create mailing labels. I can send an email just to these folks. I can send a text message. I can send a letter. I can show where they are on a map. Um, I can export them. I can delete them. I can add them to invite them to an event, uh, et cetera. The smart group is very powerful. That's what I described earlier where you say, okay, now these people now meet this new group criteria, which is maybe um, newsletter donors. And what's great about this is that now if anybody else um, makes a donation letter, later who's in the newsletter subscriber group, they're automatically added to this, this, this second group, newsletter donors. 
Likewise, if somebody unsubscribes for your donor from your from your newsletter group, they'll still be a donor, but they won't be a newsletter donor, and it'll remove them from that group. Uh, Christine is asking, I need to know about City CRM's advocacy campaign. Who can I contact to learn more? Um, now, when you say advocacy, are you saying that you want to be um, contacting elected officials? Um, if you could type a little bit more, Christine, about what you mean by uh, advocacy, I can point you in the right direction. Uh, there's, there's other ways to do searches that we're not going to get into today. Uh, suffice to say, you can slice and dice your information very finely. You can do mailings to people based on which groups they're in. Uh, the advantage to doing mailings out of a database that has all of your information, as opposed to maybe MailChimp or Constant Contact, is that you can slice and dice very finely. You can say, show me only people who live within 20 miles of, my, of the city that we're doing an event. Uh, show me only people who live within 50 miles but who have donated. Um, that's not an option in Constant Contact or MailChimp because that, those, those systems don't have your data. Uh, likewise, you could still, if you really love Constant Contact or MailChimp, there's actually plugins for Civi CRM that will let you pull your data, your, your groups into Civi, uh, Constant Contact or MailChimp so that you can continue to use those tools if you really love something about them but you don't need to. Any questions about anything I just covered? And actually, um, the last thing I'm going to just mention without getting into unless we get specific questions is that you can also do all sorts of reporting. For instance, uh, a, a live on report. Show me everybody who's, who's donated last year but not this year. Show me top donors. You can also put any of those uh, reports on your, um, on your dashboard. So when you log in, you can see, for instance, I have a report of who my donors are by state, uh, and I also have a list of my top donors. And if somebody tomorrow gives me a $600 donation, I'm going to log in and I'm going to see it right at the top of my top donors report. I can also see my upcoming activities that I've got scheduled. Uh, so now I'm going to throw, the, I know it's 3 o'clock, and I'm going to let anybody who go who needs to go, but anybody that has questions, I'll take Q&A for, for the next half hour, say, uh, and I'll, I'll answer any questions that folks have about um, anything. And I'm going to start with Christine's question, but if you have other questions, either um, toss them out uh, on the Q&A system, or once I've stopped speaking, go ahead and ask me over audio. Uh, so Christine is asking about... I just have one quick about, request before okay. I go. Could, my name is... Um, Teresa, and uh, I'm just hoping that you could shoot that contact information for WordPress integration out to me as well. Uh, okay, if you could send me an email, my email address is john, J-O-N, at palantetech.coop. Uh -huh. It should be in the email that you received for this. Please okay, thank a, you a so much for your email. time. Oh, of course, no problem. Oh, Teresa, did Thanks. you want me to very quickly look, show the import contacts very quickly? Sure, but you know what? I have to run, and I know you have someone else's. Do I think I can? Um, uh, I'll let you know by email if I need any more help with that. How about that? Okay, excellent. Okay, so thank I'm you gonna, so I'm much. Speak to Christine. Okay. Of course, no problem. Um, so I'm going to speak to Christine's question: e-advocacy. Um, City CRM is becoming a much more popular platform for this because uh, the predominant platform, Salsa and Nation Builder. Uh, are both jacking up their prices at the end of this year. Um, and so we're starting to get requests from folks that say, how can we do e-advocacy from within City CRM? Um, and the answer is uh, that you can, but you need to add a plugin to City CRM. And the, and the issue is that it's very easy to add the contact your congressperson functionality. What's not easy is to have an always updated list of who that person's congressperson is. And so you basically end up having to subscribe to a service that provides that information for you. And there's a couple of services that will provide this. And you can install a plugin for, there's um, Cicero uh, and Vox Populi are two services that provide this, this info of who somebody's uh, contact, who somebody's elected officials are, but you have to subscribe to their service. And then you install their plugin and then what happens is I haven't showed you that in addition to donation and event sign-up pages, you can also just do a, a general put, put in your info here. For instance, uh, 
sign up for a newsletter. You can just create a form. Anybody who fills it out automatically gets added to your database and maybe gets added to a newsletter. Um, but you can also set up a um, con contact your congressperson. Uh, what happens in those cases is the person puts in their address, they hit submit, it looks up based on their address who their congressperson is, fills in the appropriate elected official, and, and then sends it off to the uh, appropriate official. Um, I don't have those plugins installed here because I don't have a subscription to Sister or Vox Pop. Um, so I can't demonstrate that. What I can say is that there is something that we, that we did that's pretty cool where um, the New York Times for people in New York, they actually have a lookup for um, who your elected officials are within New York City. And we were able to release that as a free plugin where if you are in, if you're trying to get elected official information for folks within New York City, uh, we actually use New York Times as free service, and so you can add that plugin, and you don't have to pay a monthly subscription to somebody to keep your contact info up to date. Um, Christine is asking if you can integrate volatility because it's got an open API. Um, I'm not going to get into APIs because that's not going to work for most folks here, except to say that CiviCRM has an excellent and completely open API so that um, you can absolutely, um, if, if somebody is willing to write the plugin, uh, you can do it. I know we spent about 8 to 10 hours uh, writing the New York Times API plugin. I would expect that if uh, Volatility has a good plugin as well, you can do in 8 to 10 hours, you hire somebody, and now there's a Volatility plugin which hopefully that you will now contribute back to the community so that other people can benefit from it, from it as well. Um, that is one of the selling points of CiviCRM is that there, it's, the software is free and there is a thriving community of people who write plugins that add functionality to CiviCRM. So for instance, you have a new payment processor or a new feature you want to add, uh, you can write a plugin for it or pay somebody to write that plugin, and now everybody can benefit from it. I'm going to take Drew's question, then Brenda's. Drew said, uh, there's another way to slice CEO relationship data. I'm going to come back to the advanced search page. And I'm going to do the exact same search that I did a minute ago, where I'm going to say, I want to find people who are newsletter subscribers, but their contribution, and they give a contribution. Let's say they, they've, let's, 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 actually do, let's, let's actually do the same one. So we get the same six people. So I'm going to do a search for the six people who have given contributions that are um, new, also newsletter subscribers, and here they are. And now I can come back to edit search criteria, and I could go back in and tweak this. And I'm going to show you two, two features, one of which is related to what you're asking, Drew. One is, this is giving back a list of people, but let's say, I say, but let's say one of these people gave twice. I would actually want to get back seven results rather than six because one of these people gave twice. So instead of displaying the results as contact, I can display the results as contributions. And now when I search, I'm going to get back. And in this case, these people actually only gave once each. So you can see now that I'm actually looking at their contributions. So I can see how much each person gave or what the event fee is. It also means that now I can do things that are related to this contribution, like I can automatically uh, print or email contribution receipts to them. Um, and then to answer Drew's question, another thing you can display results as is you can display results as related contacts. So I'm going to say, show me anybody who is a partner of somebody who's in that original group that I just showed you. Hopefully we'll get somebody. I didn't get anybody, but I do know that there were some folks who had a board member, at least one person is a, is a board member of this other organization, or did I do that in reverse? Did I get that wrong? I'm sorry. When I set up the board member, I set it up in reverse, and I apologize for that. That's my error. Here. 
you can see here, you recall at the beginning of this, I set this up, Melinda made a donation, and I made her a board member of Eastmont Computing Center. So now I can say, show me every organization that somebody is a board member of that has given a donation that meets these other criteria. So likewise, if one of my relationships was, was um, CEO of, I could say, show me anybody who's given a donation who is a CEO of, and then get the organization. Or I could do it in reverse. Show me any organization who's donated, and then show me their CEOs. Does that, does that answer your question, Drew? Um, and uh, while yeah, you're typing uh, that, I'm going to... Excellent. Thank you. Um, and then Brenda says, could you walk us through the mailings function? Absolutely. Um, I know I skipped it for time constraint reasons, but what you do here, and I also don't like to go through this because I actually know that um, the version of Civi Sierra, there, there's actually a lot of work being done to overhaul this and make it much nicer than it is today. It's not bad today, but the mailings are going to be completely overhauled uh, in, in, uh, a, a new, in a new version. So if I want to send out a blast email here, I first name this mailing. Um, I'm going to call it my webinar mail blast. Uh, I can tie it to a campaign in case I want these stats to be relevant later and I want to see what my open rates are for a certain campaign to compare to another one, but we don't need to. And then let's say I want to send this out to all of my prospective gardeners and my active gardeners. So I can select them and I can say add. But let's say I don't want to send it to my newsletter subscribers because I know I already sent them a very similar email last week. I can exclude those folks. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to hope that actually turns up with at least a handful of folks. That actually turns up one person. So I'm actually going to go back. Let's actually remove that exclusion because that is cutting down the number of people this is going to by quite a lot. Now let's move forward. No, I guess we just don't have a lot of folks in the database with uh, email addresses, which makes sense because this is a demo database. I'm going to guess in my newsletter subscribers. Okay, now we've got eight recipients. In your databases, you're probably looking at 8,000 or at least 800. But for this, we're, we're doing with a, a fairly small amount. Um, we get to say whether we want to track click-throughs and opens. Those of you who have dealt with this before know what we're talking about here. I can see how many people opened an email. I can see how many people clicked on a link within the email. I can also track replies, um, which lets me um, if somebody wants to reply to the email, um, instead of coming, coming back to the person who sent it, it can actually come back into City CRM as an activity. And so now I have the history of that activity, uh, that, that, that mailing and the back and forth in the database. Um, I've actually never even seen this autoresponder, but that's cool. If somebody replies to your mailing, you can actually send, you can say, for more info, reply back. They reply and they get a message back. Um, and then this, this little mailing visibility, um, I'm sure a lot of you have received emails that say, are you having trouble viewing this in your web browser? Click here, or sorry, is, are you having trouble viewing this email? Click here to view it in your web browser. And this says, well, is this the sort of email that we want people to be able to see in our archive on the website or not? If you say that this is a public page, it is automatically added to a public archive of mailings you send out. Um, I'm going to click Next. And I'm actually, I'm actually going to go back because, um, because I said that we're tracking replies that disables one of the options I want to demonstrate. Let's say we're not going to track replies. So now um, I'm going to select what email address I want to send it from. And at, at the moment, we've only got one, but you can actually set up a whole bunch of, you can set up as many email addresses as you want it to come from as you want. This lets say your development people send out an email as your executive director. Um, then you can say, okay, I'm going to have, I can pick one of my many templates that I have. Let's say I'm using the sample template, which already has my, my graphics, my logo, my formatting already set up. Um, and And I can say, get in touch. I can now edit this email.
I can insert tokens. You can see here is a, there's a token, you know, greetings first name. But I can also say, you know, when is the uh, I can I can I can pull in all sorts of information about them, like their most important issue, you know. You've told us your most important issue is this, and that's what we want to talk to you today. Want to talk to you about today. Um, I can save this as a new template if I want, or I can update the existing template. I can add headers and footers. I'll hit next. I can send a test mailing to myself or to a group of folks. And then I can schedule the mailing. I can either say send this immediately or I can say send this tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. so I can make sure people get it in their inboxes when they arrive at work. And that, that is the mailing. Um, later, uh, once, once you've done a mailing, you can go in and you can see all sorts of reporting about the mailing. You can see the open rate, the click-through rate, the replies, how many, you know, all, all sorts of statistics about that mailing, including even if you want, who specifically opened your mailing. So Brenda, does that answer your question? Excellent. Um, and then I, am, I know that I said that I was going to get into permissions. Uh, is the person who wanted to hear about permissions still on the line? They may have left. Uh, anybody else? Are there any, any final questions? You were going to show how to import contacts? Oh yeah, and then Teresa left and I thought that we were going to, because I didn't realize other people wanted to see that. Um, I'm going to go into that very quickly, but actually because that's going to take a couple of minutes, I'm going to save that for last. Are there any other questions that anybody else has uh, that I can maybe answer quickly before that? Okay, in that case, um, the last thing I'm going to cover is importing contacts. Uh, folks who want to stay on for this, great. If you don't, thank you so much for your time. Uh, once again, my name is John Goldberg. Uh, I work with Palante Technology Cooperative. And if you have any questions for me, please send me an email at john, J-O-N, at palantetech.coop. That's P-A-L-A-N-T-E-T-E-C-H dot C-O-O-P. And have a lovely day. Uh, for those of you who are sticking around to see import, uh, we are going to do um, contacts, and we're going to say import contacts. Uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to choose your data source. In this case, I'm going to pick a CSV file. Uh, this is a very common spreadsheet format. If you have Excel or Google Docs, you can save your, your file as a CSV file. And I'm going to browse for a file and actually, um, Well, unfortunately, I don't have it. I don't have any data here that is that I can really pull up that is not uh, private to one of my clients. Uh, so I'm just going to just take a file that is just a random file. I can say that the first row contains column headers, and then I can say, is this am I importing individuals or organizations? You you import one at a, one at a time. Uh, I, oh, I see a question from Robert. That's a very quick question. Any idea when CiviCRM 4.5 is coming out? Beta 2 was just released. I would anticipate that means that we are about four to six weeks off of um, the new version of CiviCRM coming out. Uh, getting back to imports, uh, we, we select whether this is an individual or an organization, and we select what we want to do with duplicate contacts. Do we want to skip duplicates? Do we want the information in our ORP import to overwrite the uh, database information? Do we want the information in the database to be the canonical information? But say we have a, a, a phone number in our import and the person doesn't have a phone number at all, we can take that information without overwriting an existing phone number. Or we can simply not check for duplicates at all. Uh, and you can check for duplicates in all sorts of complicated ways that we're not going to get into today. Um, and then uh, in this case, let's say that we do this same import day in and day out. 
I don't want to have to pick which fields correspond to which fields in the spreadsheet correspond to which fields in the database. So I can pick an existing uh, uh, mapping. Although, of course, because I pick a fake field, it's not going to help me out here. Let me let me find something. I'm I'm actually just going to very quickly uh, create a. Um, There. Now we now we have a um, now we have a very bad uh, example of a file that we can import. Um, and so now let, let me let me just pull up this file because this file actually has some columns, which will make it a lot easier to um, demonstrate what I'm what I'm trying to show you. So we saw this screen. Uh, I didn't put column headers on that, unfortunately. But now we can say, okay, match these up. Match the first, you know, the first, maybe the first column was first name, second column was last name. You go through here, you know, maybe this is actually email in this case. Uh, and then you can save this mapping so that if you're doing an import of the same sorts of data every week, you don't have to pick which fields correspond to which every time. I'm going to hit continue. It's going to complain because it says, hey, you know, num number five is not a state, but you said that that was a state. So it's going to kick back those records that are not valid. In this case, uh, it's showing me that I've got invalid email addresses in an email import field. But if it did not say that, then this would be my chance to say, okay, I want to import all these people. I want to add them to an existing group. Maybe these are new gardeners that uh, were at a meeting. I say import now, and now they're in my database. Uh, so does that, does that answer the questions about imports, or are there questions about imports, or anything else? Any questions anybody has, this is, this is your chance. I couldn't tell if that was a question or not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I, I hear somebody, but I, I'm not sure if, it, I'm, if they're actually trying to speak or not. If you have any questions, um, go ahead and put them through on the Q and A system. And if not, then uh, that concludes this webinar. And thank you, everybody, very much for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.